The L4 to S3 nerve roots form the sciatic nerve, which comprises both the perineal and tibial nerves. Label the top of the page from left to right as pelvis, hip, and thigh, and leg and foot. Show the sciatic nerve pass through the pelvis, hip, and thigh, and indicate that the L4 to S3 nerve roots derive it. Now show the sciatic nerve innervates the hamstrings muscle group. To demonstrate its action, flex your leg at the knee. Note that the tibial component innervates all of the hamstrings muscles except for the short head of the biceps femoris, which the perineal nerve innervates. Next, show the sciatic nerve helps supply adductor magnus, even though the obturator nerve is its primary innervator. Bring your knees together to demonstrate adductor magnus's action. Now show the sciatic nerve unbundle into the common perineal nerve and tibial nerve, proximal to the patellar fossa. Indicate that both nerves supply branches to form the sural nerve. Next, show the perineal nerve enter the lower leg. As it wraps around the fibular head, it again divides. Show it branch into the deep perineal and superficial perineal nerves. Show the deep perineal nerve pass through the lower leg and indicate it innervates the anterior compartment lower leg muscles. They are tibialis anterior, which L4 primarily supplies, extensor hallucis longus, which L5 primarily supplies, extensor digitorum longus, and extensor digitorum brevis. Dorsiflex your foot, i.e. raise it off of the gas pedal to demonstrate the action of tibialis anterior. Then dorsiflex your great toe and then your remaining digits to demonstrate the actions of extensor hallucis longus and extensor digitorum longus respectively. The action of extensor digitorum brevis is difficult to distinguish from that of extensor digitorum longus. Wiggle your toes to palpate the extensor digitorum brevis muscle belly on the lateral dorsum of your foot. Next, show the superficial perineal nerve extend midway into the lower leg. Indicate it innervates the peroneus muscles. S1 is their major supplier. The peroneus muscles are peroneus longus, peroneus brevis, and peroneus tertius. Evert your foot to demonstrate the peroneus muscle group action. Block the outside of the foot to make this test easier. Now let's draw the tibial nerve. Show it pass through the lower leg. Indicate it innervates the posterior compartment lower leg muscles, which L4 to S2 supplies. They are the gastrocnemius, soleus, tibialis posterior, and toe flexors. Flexor digitorum brevis is innervated by the more distal medial plantar branch. With your knee extended, Flex your foot at the ankle, i.e. step on the gas, to demonstrate the action of the gastrocnemius. Soleus performs the same action but with the knee flexed. Next, invert your foot, i.e. angle it inward, to demonstrate the action of tibialis posterior. L4 supplies it. Block the inside of the foot to make this test easier. Finally, curl your toes to demonstrate the action of the toe flexors. When evaluating foot drop, Try to determine if the deficit fits a perineal or a tibial distribution. If it does not categorize into either peripheral nerve pattern, consider either a sciatic nerve injury, a lumbosacral plexus injury, or root disease. Now continue the tibial nerve to just proximal to the foot. Draw a branch for the medial calcaneal sensory nerve. Then continue the tibial nerve into the foot and indicate it forms the plantar nerves. Show that from a motor standpoint, they innervate the intrinsic foot muscles. Demonstrate the action of the intrinsic foot muscles in two different ways. First, cup your foot, and second, spread out your toes. Next, draw the posterior femoral cutaneous nerve. Show that the S1 to S3 roots supply it. The posterior femoral cutaneous nerve covers sensation from the midline posterior thigh. Now let's sketch the sensory coverage of the feet. Trace your feet. Label one as the dorsal surface of the foot and the other as the ventral surface. First indicate the medial calcaneal nerve coverage to the heel. The plantar nerves provide sensory coverage to the rest of the bottom of the feet. To specify their coverage, draw a line down the center of the fourth digit along the foot to the heel. 
Indicate the medial plantar nerve provides sensory coverage to the medial foot and the lateral plantar nerve provides sensory coverage to the lateral foot. Next, return to the tracing of the dorsal surface of the foot. Indicate the superficial perineal nerve covers all of it except for the webbing between the great toe and second digit. In our drawing of the sensory maps of the body, we will show that the superficial perineal nerve covers most of the anterior lower leg except just below the knee where the common perineal nerve provides the leg sensory coverage. This concludes our drawing of the sciatic nerve.